What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. All right, check it out, man. So the writers over there in Hollywood, they ain't okay, all right? As it says in this headline on the LA Times, uh, we checked in with Hollywood writers a year after the strike. They're not okay, all right? We could have told y'all that, writers. We actually did tell you that. I remember this time last year, I was saying, don't go on strike. It's not a good idea. Get back in the negotiating room and make the best deal you can make right now. Don't hesitate. Don't listen to your stupid, you know, uh, union president or whatever. Get back in there and make some decisions, make some deals, and just, hey, get the best deal you can get on paper and live to fight another day. But see, they didn't do that. They didn't do that. They don't listen to the DA. They don't listen to the fans. They don't listen to anybody. They're the geniuses. They know everything, all right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you're not okay. I wonder why. It's because once y'all went on strike, Hollywood was like, oh, shit, man, we can cancel all of this stuff now? We don't have to pay any of y'all? And we could try to recoup and regroup and figure out what the hell we're going to do with this industry moving forward. We could absolutely just kind of, you know, shift things around and move things around, not have to worry about paying writers. We can cancel off series that we really ain't trying to develop anymore. Yeah, there's a lot that we can do right now. And that's exactly what they did. And then the actors went on strike and they just, oh, hell yeah, man. Hey, yeah, let's just cancel everything. That's how it went down. And we called it. We called it. We said, you do not have the leverage to go on strike, writers. You do not have, especially the writers, you do not have leverage. But they didn't listen to us. And yeah, now they're not okay. All right. It's like this article is crazy, man. You got cats right here. Like this uh, first cat, uh, Ted Sullivan, uh, 14 years. He's been in the game for 14 years, uh, 53 years old. All right. So he ain't a spring chicken that can afford to fool around with rent money or car utilities and stuff. Right. Like, he even says it down here. Yeah, I feel like I'm a 20-year-old writer again, writing spec scripts for free in my apartment. Nah, you ain't, bro. You 53 years old. You probably got, like, medication you need to be taken care of and everything, okay? You don't have the uh, luxury of being 20 years old and just eating top ramen in an apartment and just screwing around trying to crack it in and get discovered in Hollywood. You don't have that no more. You know, and this bro, look, he's had his shows, okay? He's worked on hit shows such as Riverdale and Star Trek Discovery. So this cat has been in the game. He's done some work. And yet now, look what he's doing. He spends seven to eight hours a day writing without pay, preparing for the unforeseeable moment that Hollywood studios start greenlighting projects and hiring writers again. And the thing is, is he going to be one of the writers they even bring back? You see, you got to ask yourself these questions. You and all of your homies that was up and down on the picket line, Ted, you might be the odd man out, right? Okay, it's like Battle Royale right now, man. Every man for himself. That's what it is right now. Hunger Games, okay? May the odds be in your favor. And right now, you don't know who's going to have a job right now coming back. When they finally do start, you know, green lighting some projects and hiring writers, you don't know who that's going to be. It might be you. It might be somebody else. I have a feeling like the shrinkage, the contraction that they're talking about. I mean, I'm thinking maybe like one third of the writers that are working in Hollywood, you know, before the strike or will still be working. There will be two thirds of Hollywood writers completely out of work. That's my guess. That's my best guess. I could be wrong, of course. But I mean, the strikes just absolutely crushed it. And look, and they go into it right here. Right. Uh, they say, yeah, um, so-called peak TV. Right. That era enabled 599 original scripted series to land in a single year. That's over. All right. That's how a lot of these cats, a lot of these writers, that's how a lot of them got their jobs. You know, they were working on 599 scripted series in a single year. Like who can watch all of that crap? And this stuff isn't making any money. That's the main thing. You know, if this stuff was still making money, even if it couldn't be watched, like you can only watch like, I don't know how many, like 20, 30 series a year. You know, before it's like, yo, man, I got to get out of the house and do something else. You can only watch so much television, you know, but these cats screwed themselves, right? Yeah, it's going to cut down, probably going to get about 200 scripted series a year or somewhere in that range. And uh, yeah, that means we're only going to get about a third of the uh, writers uh, that are going to be hanging on, right? Here's another thing. Here's another stat. Check this out. A film and television uh, and commercial and other production activity in the first quarter of 2024 was 20.5% lower than the five-year average, according to Film LA, a nonprofit organization that tracks on-location production in the greater Los Angeles area, all right? So pay, pay attention, 20.5% lower than the five-year average, and that's in the greater Los Angeles area, all right? But look at this, globally, Film and television production lagged about 7% in the first quarter of 2024, all right? 
So the first quarter of 2024, 7% globally, but 20.5% locally in the greater LA area. What does that tell you? Yeah, there's nothing going on. There's more work going on outside of LA. It's only 7% down globally, but in LA it's down 20, basically 21%. There's much less work going on in L.A. right now. Everybody's looking globally. And that's because California is expensive to do business in L.A. specifically is expensive. But yet this used to be the hub of all of Hollywood. Hollywood is in L.A. It used to be the hub. It's no longer the hub. Everybody's like, yo, man, we can make stuff in Canada. We can make stuff over in England. We're going to get all kind of tax credits. You've seen Disney taking full advantage of that. So Disney's overseas making stuff in other countries. People are moving stuff up to Canada or they're moving to Georgia, Atlanta. They're moving to other places to make their films. L.A., where all of these writers, these people that were marching up and down Sunset Boulevard, all of these cats are in deep trouble. And they're going to have to think about moving to another city, perhaps somewhere else, getting out of Los Angeles or just going into another line of work, which is what I think they probably are going to end up needing to do. Um, we're not seeing this V-shaped recovery in the writer employment, said Patrick Adler, principal at Westwood e Economics and Planning Associates. If you squint, maybe it's a slight upward bounce, but it's not perceptible in the data that there's been some switch flipped on in the industry because there is no switch flipped on in the industry. Work has come to an absolute standstill. I mean, we saw it before I did a video where it's like, yeah, we're getting like maybe five pilots right now. Where they used to have at this point, like maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of 35 or 45 or 55 pilots. I can't remember the exact number. But now it's five. All right. So nobody's getting any work. And these writers, again, that basically sacrificed themselves on the altar for all of these other big time writers to get paid more. You know, those guys here. Yeah, thanks very much, kid. Now, you know, go shine my shoes. All right. That's basically what's happening. These cats are not going to get work on the other side of this thing. Hollywood is in a very, very, very bad way. It is desperate times right now in Hollywood. They're not making money in the box office. We saw that in 2023. All of these box office bombs after box office bomb after box office bomb. If it wasn't for Barbie, Oppenheimer, and Super Mario Brothers, it would have been a disastrous year in the box office last year. And this year isn't looking any better. We've been covering that on the DA's office. We've been looking at that. It's not getting any better. Yeah, check out this article on CNBC. Uh, summer box office bust. This season's movie slate could put up the lowest haul in decades. All right. First time since 2009, the summer box office doesn't have a Marvel movie. Instead, the Universal's Fall Guy stumbled to $28 million in the first weekend in May. Uh, this doesn't bode well for the summer box office. Already set to decline from the $4.1 billion haul after dual Hollywood labor strikes halted production and clogged the pipeline of new film releases. Yeah, see, they bumped all kinds of stuff back. You know, the stuff was supposed to come out in 2024. Oh, we got to kick it back to 2025. You know, there were a lot of films that went through that. And so this year is just like a ghost town. Yeah, like check out the big summer releases, right? Uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, that just came out. You know, that did okay. All right. But now you got If coming out this weekend along with The Strangers Chapter 1. I don't know how either one of these going to do, but I don't think a lot of people are rushing out to check out these. Uh, you got Mad Max uh, or Furiosa, all right? A Mad Max story and Garfield coming out the following weekend again. I think maybe Garfield because of the kids, but I don't know. I don't know what's going to do. I mean, it doesn't seem like something that people are going to flock to. And neither does Furiosa. Uh, Bad Boys, Ride or Die, I don't think this is going to do a lot of money. Inside Out 2 might do something. You know, fans of the original, you know, they might check it out. The Bike Riders actually looks good. I'm probably going to check that out. Uh, along with Quiet Place Day 1, that's another one. But how's it going to do in the box office? Is it going to be a smash success? Is it just going to be raking in the money? That's the question, okay? Uh, Despicable Me 4, I think Despicable Me 4 is going to be a big hit. Uh, Twisters, I don't know about, you know, it's really going to depend on the marketing on that. Uh, then you got Deadpool and Wolverine. Now, obviously I do think that Deadpool and Wolverine are going to do great, you know, but then, you know, you got Borderlands, Alien Romulus, The Crow. Uh, it doesn't seem like this is going to be a big summer movie uh, going season, does it? A lot of people will go out and check out a lot of stuff. You know, maybe some of these bigger ones again, like Deadpool and Wolverine, Despicable Me 4. I think all of these are going to get some love, you know, you know, maybe Inside Out 2. And Quiet Place Day 1, you know, I think maybe those will be the biggest summer hits. But I don't know if any of these are going to make a billion dollars. I highly doubt that. I would be shocked if, you know, like I think Deadpool and Wolverine has the best shot at it, but it's rated R. You know, so how many people are really coming to see a rated R Deadpool and Wolverine with a lot of, you know, risque adult humor for a Marvel movie? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. The Joker made a Billy, you know, but the Joker was a different kind of movie. So we'll have to see. 
Yeah, but getting back to this article, uh, the slowdown did not originate with work stoppages of 2023. Writers and other entertainment workers began noticing a decline in employment opportunities long before the writers and actor strikes began. Yeah, and that's why you don't go on strike. All right. That's exactly why you don't go on strike, because you're starting to see them uh, dry them. These opportunities drying up. And when you see employment opportunities drying up. And your boss is out here scrambling. Damn, how am I going to keep the doors open? How am I going to keep the lights on? You know, I'm scrambling around trying to shuffle stuff. I got to start canceling off stuff. I'm slowing down hiring, all right? I'm not hiring as many people, you know? They're saying that. A, a decline in employment opportunities. So, if you again, you see that your boss is not hiring new people, not bringing in new cats on the job, and he's struggling to make money, struggling to keep the lights on, why the hell would you say, hey, boss, I need a pay raise? Yo, pay up, bro. Pay up or I'm walking out of here. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and walk out. All right. We're going to see how that does. And that's what's happened with the actors and the writers, I should say. Writers and actors. It's hit them both. Uh, following the so-called streaming wars when companies spent exorbitant amounts of money on uh, direct-to-digital content to complete with Netflix, studios have dramatically slowed their pace. Yeah, because they can't make money off of it. They don't know how to make money. A lot of these streaming services are not profitable. They're getting to the point where they're now trying to tag team with other streaming services and do bundles and all of that kind of crap. Yeah, you got Comcast launching a streaming bundle with Peacock, Netflix, and Apple TV. Uh, they're going to have the stream saver available to all existing Comcast customers later this month. Yeah, they got to do this kind of stuff because all of these streaming services are hurting. It's not making any money. So Comcast got to come along and say, all right, man, let's bundle it. Let's make it a part of cable. Let's make it a part of a cable package. So now we can start selling ads and then Peacock, Netflix and Apple, they can get some of that ad bread. And so now we can maybe keep afloat that way. All right. We saw the same thing going on with Disney and Warner Brothers. Yeah. Disney and Warner Brothers launch a streaming bundle combining Disney Plus, Hulu and Max. Yeah. They, again, they got to tag team all of these things up because they can't make money on their own. Individually, all of these cats are losing bread. They're losing money. Maybe not Hulu. All right. But I know Disney Plus has absolutely not made any money. They're talking about, oh, we might make some money next time, next quarter. You know, but right now, the only one that is consistently coming out in the black is Netflix. Everybody else is trying to figure this thing out. So, I, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. You know, again, they they shot themselves in the foot by going on strike at the time that they went on strike. Not only that, but, you know, Hollywood, obviously, they have their own major issues with all of the DEI nonsense that's just destroying the industry. That's really a, a major component of this. Yeah, T always brings up the fact that the economy is trash right now, and it is. It is absolutely trash. But that is, again, the reason why you do not go on strike, all right? There's really not a lot of money to go around at this point. So you just got to, again, make the best deal you can and just move forward. We'll get them in 2026. That's how they should have looked at it, but they didn't. And television networks have been purchasing far fewer shows and only from the big names. Yeah, we said that, too. The big names, those guys are going to be all right, all right? The small guys, the guys on the picket line, they ain't going to be all right, all right? Studio's cost-cutting strategy has left writers in a pinch. As a viewer, what is there to watch? How can they make nothing, Meyer said. Even the producers saying, let's wait until the right moment. I don't know what that means. Yeah, these guys are scratching their heads. Yeah, what is there to watch as a viewer? Oh, you can watch, uh, you can watch anime, all right? You can go on there and get Crunchyroll. You can watch Eastern Entertainment, all right? Oh, you could go on uh, YouTube. You can watch your favorite YouTuber. There's all kinds of interesting content on YouTube. I find new stuff on YouTube almost every day. I find somebody else and I'm like, yeah, man, this is a good little channel. You know, watching some guy doing like baseball highlights and commentary and stuff like that stuff is fun. It's like, oh, man, I can sit up here and get lost in this. And sometimes what happens is you find an old channel that's been existing for years and you had no idea. And now you're just deep diving. You're just going back for months and months and maybe years just looking at old content. And he's like, man, this guy is great. I love his content. That's what happens on YouTube. And see, th they're not ready to compete with that. All right. Hollywood is not prepared to compete with that level of entertainment. Uh, some have speculated entertainment companies are determined to lie low until they can recoup the money lost in the streaming frenzy. A studio executive who was not authorized to comment disputed that idea. I've never heard someone saying we're intentionally going to sell less. The executive said, well, I mean, that's happening. You know, you can say that's not what people are saying, but that's what they're doing. 
You know, they're not buying things. They're just not doing it. Another studio source who was not authorized to comment said the pullback was necessary because TV production boom was simply unsustainable. All of this shit is unsustainable. All of the woke crap that they're doing is unsustainable. All of these giant budgets that they're pumping in to a lot of these TV shows, especially Disney, is unsustainable. You can't just keep cranking out 200, 300 million dollar movies, not bringing any bread in. And then expecting, oh, yeah, everything's going to work out just fine because we got ESG money coming in from BlackRock. Again, all of this shit was unsustainable. And the shareholders, you know, bringing back Bob Iger and his crew, you know, everybody's now questioning that move. Wow, we should have just let Nelson Pelt. It was one guy. We should have just let one guy in there. Maybe things might be different. You know, it's, it's crazy right now. Uh, factors such as rising production costs, lack of competitive film and television tax credits here in California. Hey, they're going overseas. They're going elsewhere. They're leaving California. California is a terrible place to do business. That's basically how it's going. Shrinking advertising revenue certainly play into that. But this contraction is a return to normal more than anything else. And I think they're right. This is basically getting back to what Hollywood was, at least from a production standpoint, pre, you know, streaming, you know, or during the early days of streaming. They're trying to get back to that, and it's going to be some pain points. But a lot of these cats that got writing jobs during this boom, they are toast. And now here comes the white pill, all right? Here's the white pill. You have the opportunity to do something independently. If you had an opportunity to work on a Hollywood production, you got more skill and experience than a lot of other cats out there. So that's your opportunity. You should be jumping in to do in independent, you know, filmmaking, writing, you know, some content creation, whatever. You have some cachet. You've made some connections, hopefully. And if you're good, if you're talented, your talent will take you to the top. If you're not talented, well, lots of luck. Right now, it's about talent. It's about hard work and it's about talent. The harder the worker and the more talented the individual, the better off they will be. But they're going to have to stop relying on this studio system. The Hollywood studio system is coming to an end, not 100%, but for a lot of these writers that relied on the studio system. They relied on studios putting them on and getting them pap that paper, all right? This guy at the beginning of the article, all right, Ted, all right, this cat, you know, Working for 14 straight years, you know, in Hollywood. Um, yeah, it's over, Ted. You're going to have to figure out another way to flex your talent. You know, whether that's you doing something on your own. Say, hey, man, let's get together with some homies. Let's put together, you know, some sort of a, you know, television show. Something from, you know, passion and heart. That's what people are looking for. Passion, heart, authenticity. People are looking for that right now. They're not looking for some scripted Hollywood bullshit. They're looking for actual authentic people that care about the work that they're doing. They're not woke. They're not trying to push some trying kind of stupid agenda. They're out to make people happy, make people smile, make people laugh. That's what they're looking for. That's what people want. They want Hollywood. They want entertainment to be entertained entertaining you know not preaching a message not slamming us over the head with some sort sort of a stupid agenda and so ted and guys like ted they are gonna have to find a way to walk through this thing you know you know as independents and it's going to be a growing pain but i think a lot of cats you know in that space that are not woke and not idiots they've already kind of seen the writing on the wall and maybe they're already starting to make some moves the woke people, the untalented chumps, those guys are just going to be holding on for dear life. And they're going to be out of there pretty soon. They're going to be back to waiting tables and parking cars. That's just how it goes. All right. But anyway, you guys let me know what y'all think about this. Again, it's just a referendum on Hollywood right now. Everything is just going from bad to worse for everybody out here in the, in, in the L.A. area. The industry is getting nervous, scared. And, and a lot of these cats, they, they don't know what they're going to do, you know. And IATSE has a strike coming up, all right? I guarantee you, IATSE, they're trying to work things out, but I have a strong suspicion that they're going to be going on strike this summer as well. And that's going to be real interesting. But you guys let me know what y'all think. Jump down in the comments. Give me your thoughts and opinions on that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.